It is Wednesday, March 9th, 2022. Welcome to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. The Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotel. We're also broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. All right. Well, it's been a, a, another very busy day today, very busy news day. I want to talk about, I want to uh, get to one story that I did not have a chance to get to uh, over the past few days. And uh, that deals with the uh, passing of, uh, that deals with the passing of actor Johnny Brown, better known as Nathan Bookman from the TV show Good Times. Uh, we know he passed away a few days ago at the age of 84. Okay. Uh, so we're going to talk uh, about that. He died Wednesday. Uh, he died last week, Wednesday, uh, March 2nd, age 84 years old. I posted about it on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network, and our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I M H O T E P. And it got a uh, big response. It got um, it was over a thousand uh, likes and it got a bunch of comments. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then uh, we'll give a quick update on what's going on in Ukraine. This is day 14 uh, of the Russian invasion in Ukraine. It started on um, February 24th. OK, so we'll give a, a update on what's going on in Ukraine and then. Also, there was a, a story came out a couple of days ago dealing with the U.S. Supreme Court. So um, the U, uh, this is from Monday, March 7th. U.S. Supreme Court denies GOP challenges to congressional maps in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. So this is good news because um, a lot of Republicans thought it was a slam dunk thought it was just preordained that they were going to take back control of at least the House of Representatives and possibly the U.S. Senate. And they thought the gerrymandering that they had structured was going to uh, guarantee them the House, uh, it's definitely the House of Representatives, because there's only a five or six seat margin in the House. And they thought they were going to get the uh, Senate as well. But as I've said before on this show, no, it's not preordained. Uh, we need to organize and we need to stop what Republicans are doing and vote more people in the office who uh, hold our interests. OK, so uh, this is not the time to give up. This is the time to get smart and get strategic. So CNN has an article about this, as well as The Washington Post uh, also. So we're going to talk some about that. Uh, and then. There was uh, another story I did not get a chance to get to uh, that came out March 4th, which was uh, Friday, last week, Friday. Uh, man pleads guilty to fatal shooting of Jacqueline Avant. Man pleads guilty to uh, fatal shooting of Jacqueline Avant, uh, wife of Godfather of Black Music, Clarence Avant. So, you know, we talked about the uh, tragic killing of uh, Clarence Avant's wife a few uh, months ago. We talked about that here on this show. And we know there was the uh, documentary on Netflix, uh, 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 Godfather of, uh, 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 the Black Godfather, the Black Godfather, which is about Clarence Avant. Okay, so uh, we know his wife was tra tragically shot and killed. Uh, doing a breaking and entering, doing a burglary. So uh, we have an update in that story also. All right. And we'll talk a little bit about the uh, online class I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. And from the Civil War to the Civil Rights Movement and Black Power, 1865 to 1968. Okay, now on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world, because right now it's corrects wrong behavior. 
what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. All right, uh, call the numbers 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call in number if you have a question or comment. Okay, so we're going to uh, jump into this first story, and this deals with veteran actor uh, Johnny Brown. Johnny Brown, we all know him uh, from Good Times as Nathan Bookman, but he was a, he was a very talented uh, actor, uh, singer. Um, he was a regular back in the day on Rowan and Martin's Laugh In. Um, I, I saw a story from the first story I saw was from the the uh, Sun Times. Uh, Sun Times had an article about this, and I saw an outpouring of affection for him as well. We all remember Nathan Bookman, uh, Buffalo Book, but right, <laughs> but <laughs> he as um, over over the course of time after James was killed off because they didn't like a strong black man, uh, Norman Lear and Bud York and the white people in control of the TV show Good Times after they killed off uh, uh, John Amos' character. And during a period of time when Esther Rose stepped away from the show because she did not she did not like the, uh, the, the direction of the storyline and she did not like the fact that um, they had Florida Evans remarry to a man who was an atheist. She didn't like uh, also JJ's clowning around, etc. We saw the uh, screen time of uh, Johnny Brown increase, just like the screen time of Janae Dubois with Lona Woods. We saw that uh, increase as well. Okay, so uh, this story here from the uh, Hollywood Report: Johnny Brown, comedian, singer, and Good Times actor, dies at age 84. The versatile performer played building played building super uh, superintendent Nathan Bookman on the sitcom Good Times. He starred with Sammy Davis Jr. on Broadway and was a regular on Laugh-In. Okay, so uh, Johnny Brown, the easygoing actor, comedian, and singer, best known for portraying Nathan Bookman, and the show still run it runs and reruns on. Uh, networks like uh, uh, TV One, okay? It runs on reruns. I, I don't think I've ever met uh, an African-American who has never seen an episode of Good Times, okay? So <laughs> I, I don't think so at all. Uh, he was 84 years old. Now, uh, Johnny Brown died on Wednesday, uh, March 2nd, and his daughter, actress Sharon Catherine Brown, announced it on Instagram, okay? Now, his daughter... Uh, also, if you remember the if you remember the uh, episode of Good Times where they had Fun Girl, who was um, uh, 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 JJ had the CB radio and Michael used it. He met this woman named Fun Girl. That's actually Johnny Brown's real uh, real life daughter. She was also on an episode of um, uh, A Different World, the Gladys Knight episode where uh, Jaleesa and Whitley were going to be backup singers for Gladys Knight. They're going to be pips. And the one uh, girl who's like an opera singer, they had to sing lead with them. That's that's Johnny Brown's daughter. Our family is devastated, 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 beyond heartbroken, barely able to breathe, she wrote. We'll continue this on the other side of the break with uh, the life of Johnny Brown. We'll talk about Clarence Avon's, uh, Clarence Avon as well, Supreme Court. And give you an update on what's going on in Ukraine. This is the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM, the Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, uh, March 9th, 2022, and we are live. Okay, so right before the break, uh, we were talking about 
uh, the passing of veteran actor um, and singer Johnny Brown, best known as Nathan Bookman, on the long-running uh, CBS uh, sitcom uh, Good Times. Okay, stand, okay, just give me a minute here. Computer's freezing up on me. Okay, so he passed. Um, he passed away on uh, March second. He was eighty-four years old. And uh, I saw a post on uh, Instagram about it as well. I saw a post that Janet Jackson did on Instagram because I follow her on Instagram. Uh, also, remember she was Penny, um, uh, Penny on Good Times. So uh, let's go back to this article from Hollywood Reporter. Uh, further details of Johnny Brown's death were not uh, were not immediately available. Johnny Brown also recorded songs and performed in a band with saxophonist Sam the Man Taylor. He appeared twice on uh, he appeared twice on Broadway in the 1960s, and he was a regular for three seasons on Roaring Martin's uh, Roaring and Martin's Laughing. Uh, Johnny Brown, who did a mean impression of Louis Armstrong, and there there, there are a couple of episodes of. Uh, of good times where he gets to do his impression. So you really get to see um, how talented he was. Uh, he does it. He did Ed, Mc, Ed McMahon. He did Louis Armstrong, but he did a mean impression of Louis Armstrong and others. He was a leading contender to play Lamont opposite Red Fox on Saffron and Son. We know that went to Demond Wilson, but because of his contract, because his contract bound him to Rowan Martin's laugh in, the role went to Demond Wilson. Okay, can you? So I, I can't. I can't imagine. Really. Okay. So I have all 122 episodes. I think it is of Sanford and the Sun on DVD. All right. I can't imagine anybody else playing the part of Sanford of Lamont Sanford than Demond Wilson. Even though Cleveon Little was also supposed to be Lamont Sanford, but I mean, you know. So Johnny Johnny Brown may have been a good Lamont. I mean, I. I, I can't see anybody else other than Demond Wilson playing Lamont. Maybe, maybe Johnny Brown could be Rollo, Rita Lawson's boy Rollo. That was Nathaniel Taylor. Okay, or maybe they, maybe they would come up with another role for Johnny Brown to be a friend of of Lamont. Like they came up with one for uh, um, uh, uh, the the, the uh, Julio. Okay, Julio Fuentes, who moved next door and then mysteriously disappeared. Right, the Puerto Rican. Okay, so, uh, but he was also supposed to be um, Lamont Sanford on Sanford and Son. And I mean, the trajectory, if he got that role on Sanford and Son, which is still in reruns now, uh, and, and Sanford and Son has, has ran in reruns continuously since it was canceled in the late 1970s. Uh, the trajectory of his career, he would just gone into the stratosphere if that, if that had happened. Now, with, with former Laugh-In writer Alan Mannings serving as producer of Good Times, Johnny Brown joined the Chicago set uh, of the CBS comedy in 1975, midway through its second season. His character was often teased about his weight by uh, Jimmy Walker, Jimmy J.J. Walker, who is uh, doing commercials, uh, telling you how to get more money for from your social security. So I'm, I'm still trying to figure out is is who's going to get JJ's uh, Medicare money. Is it going to be Boom Boom Belinda? Is it going to be Samantha the Human Panther? Is he going to be his uh, boss's uh, daughter who he who he dated at the advertising agency? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm still trying to figure out who's going to get JJ's Medicare money. But anyway. <laughs> His character was often was it, it's going to be TC. TC was the apprentice of uh, of uh, Nathan Bookman. Okay, the 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 uh, the female character TC is going to be TC. Who, who's going to get JJ's uh, Medicare money? Uh, his character was often teased about his weight by uh, Jimmy JJ Walker and other members of the Evans family. Uh, Johnny Brown said in 2019 sometimes. You can do too much of a thing and it doesn't come natural. With everybody uh, calling Bookman Buffalo butt in a scene, it loses something. They even had Janet Jackson, who had just come on the show, answering like Mr. Buffalo butt. Okay. So, yeah, they called him. Uh, 
today I don't think because people are more sensitive to other people's feelings because of political correctness and, and it being politically being politically correct is not always a bad thing. Um, I don't think if the show was in was um, uh, in first runs now that they probably wouldn't uh, tease him about his weight because people are more conscious about body shaming, things like this. So they probably wouldn't tease him about his weight. Um, he went on to say, and they used it in every show. They used it in every show. They used it when I walked in the show, all through the scene. When I left the scene, they used it. I couldn't say anything because I have a wife and two kids to support. Now at my age, I would have to say something, end quote. So what he's saying is he didn't like the way they made fun of Nathan Bookman's uh, weight. And because at that time he had a wife and two children to support, he didn't speak up. He would speak up now. Now, somebody who did speak up was John Amos and they, and they, and they killed off John Amos character because John Amos complained about um, how they had a JJ acting like a fool. All right. And he felt that there were more positive stories that they could do. And when you when you study the creators of Good Time, the creators of Good Time, Good Times were Eric Monty and Mike Evans. Eric Monty, um, Eric Monty was the screenwriter for uh, Cooley High. OK, Eric Monty, African-American man. He appeared on Good Times at least once as Monty. Uh, the character of Monty was a friend of James. And then uh, I think he I think he uh, appeared. He said, James, your number hit. I think that was Eric Monty. Uh, but also Mike Evans. Mike Evans was the ori original Lionel on the Jeffersons. OK, that's Mike Evans. Mike Evans starts out as Lionel Jefferson on All in the Family. Then they bring in uh, his uh, his his mother and father. Um, they originally had a different guy playing, uh, playing George Jefferson and they bring in Sherman Hemsley. They have Isabel Sanford as Louise Jefferson, their neighbors to, um, Edith Bunker and, and Archie Bunker. They get their spinoff show, uh, the Jeffersons and then, uh, Good Times, uh, is a spinoff of Maud. Maud is a spinoff of All in the Family. Maud um, was uh, Maud was Edith Bunker's cousin. Maud had a maid named uh, Florida Evans. Florida Evans had now they had a different at first they had a different guy playing Florida Evans husband. And I think his name originally was Hank or something like that. Then they bring in John Amos. John Amos used to be on uh, the Mary Tyler Moore show as Woody, the sports, the, the, uh, the sportscaster. They bring in John Amos now on to be, to be her husband on Maud while Maud, while Florida Evans is Maud's maid. John Amos, uh, James Evans on Maud was a firefighter. He was a fireman. When they spin off uh, Esther Rose show, who I met before, I actually met Esther Rose before. She's a member, she was a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. So was Janae Dubois, Alona Woods. Um, and, uh, those are my sisters. So I met, uh, Esther Roll at a, a state conference for, uh, it was a state conference for Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated some years ago. But when they spun off her show, Good Times, they wanted her to be a single mother with those three children in the projects. Esther Roll was a very dignified woman, a very smart woman. And she stood her ground. She demanded that they give her a husband. And a black husband also. She didn't want a white husband. They did. She demanded that they give her a husband. So they bring John, John Amos over to be her husband. But instead of John Amos being a firefighter, they gave John Amos a sixth grade education. See, you got to understand his background history. And these, these are stereotypes that Eric Monty and Mike Evans were fighting. They were they were the creators of good times. And the, and the youngest character of Mike Evans or Michael Evans is named after Mike Evans, the co co creator of Good Times. And they were in Eric Monty and Mike Evans were both writers on the show Good Times. So at the end of 
each episode in the credits, you see their names, Eric Monty and Mike Evans. They wanted to fight against stereotypes in Hollywood. OK, but Norman Lear wanted to perpetuate stereotypes of African-Americans in Hollywood. All right. So um, Johnny Brown was born on June 11th, 1937 in St. Petersburg, Florida and raised in Harlem. He won an amateur night competition at the Apollo Theater. He starred in the nightclub as uh, he starred in nightclub acts with his future wife, June, and with tap dancer Gregory Hines, Jr., and drummer Gregory Hines Sr. and recorded songs for Columbia and Atlantic Records. While working in the Catskills, Johnny Brown uh, met Sammy Davis Jr. and the legendary entertainer would prove to be an inspiration. Uh, Johnny Brown in a 1996 interview said he did all the things I wanted to do, referring to Sammy Davis Jr. He said, I wanted to be a well-rounded, complete entertainer I didn't just want to sing or tell a joke. We'll continue this on the other side of the break. We'll talk about also the Supreme Court uh, striking down, stabbing, uh, uh, taking away the hopes and dreams of many Republicans. Supreme Court denies GOP challenges to congressional maps in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. Uh, we'll give you an update on what's going on in Ukraine. This is day 14 of Putin's invasion of Ukraine. It's not going the way he thought it was going to go. And uh, we'll also talk about the uh, the man who killed uh, Jacqueline Avant, Clarence Avant's wife. Uh, this guy pleaded guilty uh, in court. What else was he going to do? We uh, Everybody knew he did it. You listen to the After History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation of Future Radio. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Natori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. Abundant Capital Group is a real estate investment company with over 20 years of experience in real estate. They specialize in two areas of real estate. One, they solve real estate problems with creative financing solutions that give the seller the most money for their property. And two, they show individuals how to get a higher rate of return on their investment capital with real estate note investing. If you are looking to sell or need to sell your property, here is what they provide. Market value offer, even if you have little or no equity, they typically pay all closing costs, which can be thousands of dollars. They close on a date, of the seller's choosing and the seller does not have to be out of the house at the time of closing. They take the property in an as is condition and the seller is not required to make any repairs. Give them a call or email them today for a free consultation and see how they can help you with your real estate needs. Call them at 973-475-8488. That's 973-475-8488. Visit their website, AbundantCapitalGroup.com, that's AbundantCapitalGroup.com, and email them at ACG at AbundantCapitalGroup.com. Follow them on Instagram and Facebook at Abundant Capital Group. Current events of history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism is. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out. So you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts. You control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do what keeps what it doesn't know. We have it all on 910 AM Superstation. 
910, the Superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 910 AM Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. It is Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, and we are live. Okay. Um, I, I just sent you a clip on Ukraine, uh, Shakita. We're going to go to that here in just a second. Okay, so uh, right before the break, we were talking about the passing of uh, Johnny Brown, 84 years old, uh, singer, uh, actor, uh, best known as uh, Nathan Bookman on uh, Good Times. He passed 84 years old on March 2nd. Um, so far, no cause of death, uh, according to this piece from Hollywood Reporter, no cause of death has been uh, listed yet. So, uh, okay, so right before the break, we talked about him performing with uh, Sammy Davis Jr. also, and he wanted to be like Sammy Davis Jr. In 1964, when Sammy Davis, was, uh, Sammy Davis Jr. was preparing to star in a musical adaptation, a musical adaptation of Golden Boy on Broadway, he got Johnny Brown a gig as Godfrey Cambridge's understudy. Uh, Godfrey Cambridge was also in Watermelon Man. He was in uh, um, he was in the movie, um, not Hell Up in Harlem. It was a uh, Cotton Comes. To, oh, it was a Cotton Comes to Harlem. No, not Cotton Comes to Harlem. It was uh, it was another movie from the early seventies with uh, Red Fox. Uh, um, what was that? It was Red Fox, Calvin Lockhart, and um, it wasn't. It wasn't Cotton Comes to Harlem. That was. Uh, I don't think that was it. But Godfrey Cambridge was in there as well. So uh, Johnny Brown said he had never seen a Broadway show before that. Uh, but then Godfrey Cambridge began bickering with director Arthur Penn. In those days, a big thing for a comedian was an album, like Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor and, and those guys. If an album sold, they could make big, uh, big concert money, Johnny Brown said. Godfrey Cambridge uh, couldn't get out of a contract, so uh, he started... Um, I think it was Cotton Comes to Harlem. I think that was the with the Bell of Cotton and the uh, Slick Preacher played by Calvin Lockhart. I think that was, I think that was Cotton Comes to Harlem. Cambridge couldn't get out of a contract, so he started arguing every day until two days before opening for previews, end quote. That's when Godfrey Cambridge was fired. Johnny Brown took over as Ronnie and uh, took the lead on the show-stopping number, Don't Forget 127th Street, as Golden Boy lasted more than 500 performances, okay? Uh, Johnny Brown made his film debut portraying a blind pianist uh, in, the, uh, Davis, uh, st uh, in the Davis starring drama A Man Called Adam, future Good Times co-star Janae Dubois, who also sings on the theme song of uh, good times i mean well uh not just good times but um on the jeffersons okay uh fish don't fry in the kitchen beans don't burn on the grill she actually wrote that okay she actually wrote that theme song um future good times co-star janae dubois also a member of zeta Phi beta sorority incorporated also was in that and returned to broadway in 1968 for carry me back to morningside heights directed by sydney portier Despite a cast that featured Cicely Tyson, Diane Ladd, Louis Gossett Jr., who uh, appeared as um, uh, Esther, uh, Esther Rowe's brother, uh, Wendell, I think his name was Wendell, uh, he just popped up for, uh, as the episode. First, first, and so Louis Gossett Jr. played two roles on, on Good Times. One role, when James was on the show, he was dating, um, he, he was dating uh, Bernadette Stannis, he was dating Thelma Evans. Then he pops up when James leaves. Okay. Uh, he, he uh, when James exits, he pops up as uh, Esther Rowe's brother. Okay. He just pops up out of nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's a brother. But anyway, that's TV. That's what they do. 
Despite a cast that features Cicely Tyson, Diane Ladd, Louis Gossett Jr., and David Steinberg, the comedy lasted but a week. Okay, I'll read the rest about uh, Johnny Brown in his long career uh, in entertainment. Condolences to the family as well. Uh, we know also there was a there was a story from um, there was a story from ShadowAndAct.com, and then also I saw another outlet pick this up as well. But uh, Janet Jackson and Bernadette Stannis. Bernadette Stannis played Thelma Evans on Good Time. So I, I've actually interviewed Bernadette Stannis twice. I have to dig into our archives because I, I have those interviews. I still have those interviews I did with her. Um, and, and then she's on the show. Uh, she's on the family business. I, I just found out today I, I don't watch the family business on BT. I watch very little scripted TV. But I found out Bernadette Stannis is on that show as well. So uh, good for her. Uh, and her husband Kevin. I know, I know, I know they're happy with that. Um, so Shadow and Act had this story. Uh, Janet Jackson and Bernadette Stannis react to Good Times, co-star Johnny Brown's death. His talent was beyond measure. His talent was beyond measure. This is from March 8th, 2022, from Shadow and Act.com. Uh, and they they they, they uh, share memories of them give their condolences, things like that. Uh, so check this out also. Uh, okay, click there, read the full article. They've got the ads. Uh, following his death, Good Times co-star Janet Jackson and Bernadette Stannis took the social media to pay tribute. On uh, March 5th, Bernadette Stannis, Thelma Evans on Good Times shared her thoughts. She said, I will miss all the stories about Sammy Davis Jr., Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and even John Wayne. He imitated John Wayne as well, Johnny Brown. Uh, she wrote, his talent was beyond measure. He was such a pleasure to work with. I certainly will miss his happy spirit and big smile, praying for his family in every way. Rest in peace, my wonderful friend. I would truly miss you. Okay, that's Thelma Evans. Uh, it was Bernadette Stanis, I should say. He played Thelma Evans. Um, she still is good too. I'm just saying. And <laughs> uh, okay, so this is uh her on um, it was this uh, Instagram I think is her Instagram page. Yeah, uh, burned this on Instagram. It's Thelma. Ep was it uh Thelma of Good Times on Instagram? And then I followed Janet Jackson, so I saw the post Janet Jackson did. Uh, she says such loving memories of our time together. You were, you, you were full of laughter and forever smiling, always so sweet and so kind to me. I love you and will miss you. Hashtag Johnny Brown. Okay, so that's a big loss, very talented um, actor. And, um, you know, he is memorialized in history, uh, being on a TV show, Good Times. All right, uh, Shakita, let's go to this clip here from NBC News. Today was uh, day 14 of Putin's invasion of Russia. Here's a quick update on what's going on. Let's go to uh, this clip from NBC News. That Russians should be proud of what their soldiers are doing in Ukraine. But where's the honor in bombing a children's and maternity hospital in a city that's surrounded? No patients were reported killed in this attack, but pregnant women were among those who were helped out of the building. Ukraine called it a war crime and says children are still trapped. I cannot realize why it's necessary for Russian troops to, dis to, to destroy hospitals. Russia denied it was responsible. The Russian forces have been cutting off Mariupol for days. The city has run out of basic supplies. We don't have electricity. We don't have anything to eat. We don't have medicine. We have nothing, this woman says. At an urgent care hospital in Kiev, medical officials accused Russia of deliberately targeting civilians across the country. In every room, we saw civilians. This man, having a bullet removed from his leg, in an adjacent room, a man with a brain injury. He'd been under his bombed home for two days before being dug out. How are you in the medical community handling this war? There is a kind of uh, duty. 
Uh, we, we have to because we are doctors. This family was escaping a suburb north of Kiev. After Russian troops bombed their house, the family hit the road and was quickly stopped by Russian soldiers who waved them on. But as soon as their car started moving, another group of Russian troops sprayed the car with bullets. 16-year-old Katerina was shot in the back. She collapsed unconscious on top of her 8-year-old brother, saving him. I remember that we were driving, and the first thing I saw was my knee that was shot through to the bone. And after that, I think I fainted. Her mother, Tetiana, was hit by 12 bullets down her legs while she was pleading with the Russians to stop shooting. But you cried. They started shouting, stop, there are children here, stop. But they didn't stop and kept shooting. Three or four people were shooting, just as close as you are sitting right now. Her husband feels guilt for not having left sooner. But Russian media are not showing these images. Instead, Russian TV describes the special military operation as a heroic struggle against Nazis. Back in Mariupol, the crater next to the hospital gives an idea of the sheer size of the bomb dropped in the center of the city. Bodies here are being laid to rest in mass graves, hearkening back to wars Europe thought were consigned to the past. Mm-hmm. Ukraine is also sounding the alarm after Russian forces cut the power to the Chernobyl nuclear disaster site, disrupting cooling and monitoring systems. The IAEA and U.S. officials say there's no immediate risk of a radiation leak. Okay, pause it, pause it right there, Shakita. If that was it, let me know. Okay, uh, we'll talk some more about this uh, tomorrow because there are uh it looks like war crimes that russia is committing as well uh you listen to the african history network show on michael m hotel we'll be back in a few minutes the business scaling challenge is a seven day online event that is taking place the week of march 13th through march 19th 2022 this challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Natori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. What does self-care mean to you? To us, it's an opportunity to reconnect with nature. A chance to create something remarkable. At Sage and Elm Apothecary, Our handcrafted skincare and household products immerse you in Earth's sweetest nectar, connecting you to nature in a way you never imagined. 
see for yourself and visit us at sageandelmapothecary.com. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on the Antenna M Superstation, the Future Radio. I'm your host, Brother Michael M. Hotep. All right, be sure to register for the online class I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. On Sundays is ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade where they didn't teach you in school. Ma'afa is a key Swahili term that refers to the great disaster. It refers to our Holocaust. Um, and then this is a 10-week online course. I teach, we deal with thousands of years of history and what leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place. We do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. As soon as you register, you can watch the class we did last weekend. Uh, the class is on sale, $130, regularly 60. It's on sale, $60, regularly $130. And even after the course is over with, you still have full access. You can still watch it. Uh, we have a bundle pack also. You can register for both classes that I teach for $100. Uh, that's a $260 value. If, you take, if you've taken any of my online classes in the past, email me at show at africanhistorynetwork.com. You get 50% off. But visit our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. All right, uh, Shakita, we're going to that clip that I just sent you dealing with the uh, Supreme Court. Okay, uh, so the Supreme Court uh, denied, uh, this came out on uh, on Monday, March 7th. CNN has this piece also the Washington Post. Uh, Supreme Court uh, denies GOP challenges to congressional maps in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. All right. Uh, the Supreme Court on Monday, uh, on Monday night, March 7th, uh, denied requests from uh, Republican challengers, denied requests from Republican challengers uh to the congressional maps in north carolina and pennsylvania that have been approved by state courts in two rulings that could benefit democrats in the midterm elections the north carolina congressional map drawn by state judges would likely give democrats at least another seat in congress next year in the 2022 in the 2022 midterm elections the court uh, over the noted dissents by Justices uh, Samuel Alito and Clarence Thomas and Neil Gorsuch turned away an emergency request from Republican legislators to use a different map that would be more favorable to Republicans. Let's go to this clip, Shakita. For North Carolina redistricting maps, the U.S. Supreme Court turned away Republicans' request to halt congressional district maps today. This was GOP state leaders' last-ditch effort to stop the new maps from taking effect. Lawmakers passed a second set of maps last month after their first set were rejected. Okay, that's, that's, from, that's, that's from WCNC, uh, North Car WCNC uh, which is Charlotte, North Carolina. That's WCNC.com. Okay. So this is uh, good news as well, because this whole uh, the, the gerrymandering and the voter suppression bills, all this, they're all connected, uh, trying to suppress the African-American vote and vote of Latinos and, and, and Asian-Americans, et cetera. For Pennsylvania, the court rejected an emergency request from a group of six Republican voters who wanted to freeze a ruling from the Commonwealth's high court that allowed the maps to take effect and altered the general primary calendar. There were no noted dissents. Uh, there were no noted dissents from the two sentence order. Okay, so read the rest of this here from uh, CNN. Supreme Court denies GOP challenges to congressional maps in North Carolina and Pennsylvania. This is from March 7th. 2022 from uh, from uh, CNN.com. Okay, lastly, uh, we got an update in the uh, tragic story about uh, Clarence Avant and um, about the uh, uh, Clarence Avant and the killing of his wife a few months ago. So uh, NBC News has this uh, story I saw when it came out a few days ago, we did not get a chance to talk about it. This is from March 4th, Friday, March 4th, 2022. Man pleads guilty to fatal shooting of Jacqueline Avant, wife of 
Godfather of Black Music, Clarence Avant. And here's a picture of them uh, also. This is a tragic, senseless killing. Uh, a man pleaded guilty to murder uh, last week, Thursday, March 3rd, uh, in the death of uh, Jacqueline Avant, the wife of the legendary uh, Los Angeles music executive Clarence Avant, officials said Ariel Maynor, M-A-Y-N-O-R, 30 years old, Ariel Maynor, was accused of, Clarence, of killing Jacqueline, uh, Jacqueline Avant, 81 years old, and shooting at her security guard during a robbery at her Beverly Hills home on December 1st, 2021, the office of Los Angeles uh, District Attorney George uh, Gaskin said in a statement, Ariel Maynor pleaded guilty to one count of first degree murder, attempted murder, and two counts of burglary, two counts of burglary. He faces a maximum of 170 years in prison and will be ineligible for parole, the statement said. He will be ineligible for parole, okay? I think he's gonna be in there for uh, some time. Now, the security guard was not injured in the shooting. Ariel Maynor was arrested on December 2nd after security video catch captured him leaving uh, the, um, the home uh, it wasn't main it wasn't the Maynard's home it was probably the avon's home shortly after the shooting jacqueline avon a philanthropist mother and one-time model in the ebony fashion fair married Cl clarence avon in 1967. clarence avon is credited with helping launch the careers of notable black musicians including bill withers ain't no sunshine till she's gone um and was known as the godfather of black music and watch the watch the documentary on netflix man got uh the black godfather this is a, that's a fantastic documentary he knows everybody when clarence avant was inducted into the rock and roll hall of fame in 2021 lionel richie recalled him as quote the one that brought us to some understanding of what the music business was all about, end quote. Okay, read the rest of this uh, story here from NBC News. Man pleads guilty to fatal shooting of Jacqueline Avant, wife of Godfather of Black Music. All right, be sure to visit our uh, website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Now, if you like this type of information, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the ahn show we don't have you know billionaire donors behind us so multi-millionaire donors we don't, I don't we don't have none of that okay so uh you can support us we definitely appreciate that and uh it's at our website africanhistorynetwork.com uh also register for the online courses that i teach on saturdays and sundays you can use these with your children as well i would say the information is pg-13 Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa, understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they, didn't what they didn't teach you in school. All right, we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Right now, let's correct wrong behaviors. Not over till we win. We're kind of forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. All right. Okay, uh, everybody, follow us on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network. Turn on live notifications. So you know when we go live, also follow us on our YouTube channel, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. And um, I'm going to post a link here so you can register for the online class. We have the uh, course bundle also, so you can register for both classes. Uh, they're on sale $100 for both of them, uh, regularly $130 each. So I do a PowerPoint presentation. We have book references, articles, video clips, all of that um, in the... Uh, online class. And as soon as you register, you can watch the uh, class uh, that I did, that, that we, you can watch the classes we did this weekend. All right, so it's a very visual presentation that I do. It's over 200 slides uh, in the class. So if, uh, if you want to 
if you've taken any of my online courses in the past, email me at AHN show at African history network.com AHN show at African history network.com. And then also if you want to pay with uh, cash app, you can pay through cash app as well. So if you don't want to pay through the website with PayPal or your debit card, credit card, you want to use cash app, email me and we can set that up also. All right. Okay, look, we have to get out of here. Remember, at the African History Network, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now, let's correct your own behavior. It's not over till we win. We're kind of forever. And we'll talk to you uh, tomorrow. Peace. The work that I do is larger than the fashion industry. It's larger than the art world. And I believe that I was born to bring newness into this world. I'm Kaima McIntyre. I'm 24 years old and I'm an artist. I create everything from paintings to jewelry design, metaphysical jewelry to be specific, and fashion design. The only reason why my prom dress went viral is because people needed it. Within a few days of going viral, Notori Naughton reached out to me and she's like, I saw your dress, can you make me a dress? I was equally as shocked to be asked by a celebrity to design their dress at the age of 17. That's just one person and the list just continues to go on to Janet Jackson, to Tyra Banks. It really hits home. That means that the discussion is happening on the grounds in real time. iRedify is a Black-owned digital platform that showcases Black and Brown cultures and people. The books on the platform are written by African-American authors, Afro-Caribbean authors, African authors, and so much more. Kids 14 and under can read eBooks, listen to audiobooks, and complete learning activities. Kids can even write in the books digitally Get unlimited access to everything on the platform for only $8.99 a month at iRedify.com. Sign up for your membership today. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. STEM Forward, helping our community find their place in the emerging fields of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Join us for our monthly live stream on our website, stemforwardedu.org. Watch, subscribe, share. Also join our mailing list to stay up to date with STEM resources and opportunities. STEM Forward, the future is now. Watch, subscribe, share. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. Come and travel with me to a time long ago and place far away. You will experience high adventure and excitement. You are fighting alongside an ancient army in fierce battle. 
Feel the exhilaration of struggle and final conquest. My name is Manin Kare, and I am both a prince and a priest in one of the most advanced civilizations humans have ever produced. I want you to ride with me in my chariot as I slay the barbarians who have come to invade my land. I invite you to sit at the conference table with the great Pharaoh Taharqa and his ministers as they plan intrigue and use subterfuge to outmaneuver and defeat the enemy. Come back with me to the land of your ancestors, to the beautiful land of Kemet. So open the pages of this book and begin the adventure. Find out what happens in the book, Maninkare Battles the Assyrians in the Nile Valley from author Makari Jones. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. Follow the story Skeeter Hawk as attorney Ben Brooks rediscovers his Gullah Geechee heritage and finds romance along the Gullah Trail and the Sea Islands. Jilted by his fiancée who refused to marry him, Ben Brooks goes back home to Gullah country. There, the Gullah people come to call him Skeeter Hawk. While rediscovering his heritage, Skeeter Hawk unravels dark family secrets. A beautiful childhood friend, Fulla, becomes his guide as they travel the Gullah Trail from North Carolina to the Sea Islands in South Carolina in search of more answers. Ben Brooks falls in love with her and becomes torn between her and his former fiance who wants to rekindle their romance. He also deals with a premonition that one of his enemies is pursuing him, providing a backdrop for mystery, romance, intrigue, and suspense in this page-turning novel called Skeeter Hawk from author Sabby Stone. Order your copy today at SabbyStone.com. That's S-A-B-Y, SabbyStone.com. Mental health and well-being have long been a taboo subject in the so-called African-American community. So I enlisted the help of mental health experts, thought leaders, and activists to help kill the ghost of Willie Lynch and heal from post-traumatic slave syndrome. We experience trauma a lot of times um, on a subconscious level. So sometimes something happens to us and we know that it's traumatizing, but we don't really recognize the extent of the trauma. The Business Scaling Challenge is a seven-day online event that is taking place the week of March 13th through March 19th, 2022. This challenge will guide a group of business owners through scaling their businesses. Business owner Ronnie Sumler is hosting the Business Scaling Challenge in remembrance and honor of her father, the late civil rights activist Rodney Sumler. He helped a lot of African-American-owned businesses and local community leaders participate in politics. However, when he passed away, all of his ventures died with him. This inspired his daughter, Ronnie Sumler, to help community business owners preserve their businesses. Her business, Digital Dandelions, offers business Bibles to record business processes and procedures. Their business Bibles are their branded run of show business manuals that have everything you need to run your business in one place. Their business scaling kit is the first step in creating a business Bible. It includes everything needed to grow your business in one place. Join the Business Scaling Challenge Facebook group for more information and good luck in scaling your business. Come and travel with me to a time long ago and place far away. You will experience high adventure and excitement. You are fighting alongside an ancient army in fierce battle. Feel the exhilaration of struggle and final conquest. My name is Manin Kare, and I am both a prince and a priest in one of the most advanced civilizations humans have ever produced. I want you to ride with me in my chariot as I slay the barbarians who have come to invade my land. 
I invite you to sit at the conference table with the great Pharaoh Taharqa and his ministers as they plan intrigue and use subterfuge to outmaneuver and defeat the enemy. Come back with me to the land of your ancestors, to the beautiful land of Kemet. So open the pages of this book and begin the adventure. Find out what happens in the book, Maninkare Battles the Assyrians in the Nile Valley from author Makari Jones. Get your copy today at Amazon.com. Soul in Motion, celebrating 38 years in the arts. This energetic ensemble of dancers and drummers was started by percussionist Michael Friend and is led by choreographer, associate director Pam Lassiter. Based in the Washington, D.C. area, Soul in Motion is now accepting bookings for Black History Month, Juneteenth, and summer festivals in 2022. Soul in Motion is also available for more intimate events like naming ceremonies and weddings. To find out more or to book your date, call 240-452-1349 or send an email to info at soulinmotion.org. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Soul in Motion, celebrating our history, our culture, our future. Soul in Motion. Theater, African dance, and drumming since 1984.